What does cinnamon and these fire noodles have in common? I don't know. They were both once the most popular challenge that people attempted on YouTube. But since 2015, a lot of cultural developments have happened to this product. I also like how they put artificial here, as if I'm gonna assume otherwise. So today I scoured across international social media and found some of the most interesting, delicious, and from time to time weird fire noodle recipes that I'm gonna showcase to you in this episode. Sponsored by me and my merch. And it's selling like a god church. Hopefully we can make it through the day without the existence of my lips and the other end getting too intense. So let's get started with our first recipe. Well, first things first. I'm really I just bought this official pot of Korean cuisine and it's already destroyed. I don't know why, but I feel like when you see someone whip out this pot, you just know it's gonna be some fire Asian food. We're gonna cook the noodles first, and you guys already know that I start with cold water because I really feel like it doesn't make a difference. Once it's boiling, we'll just stir it around and let it cook for about 2 minutes. Until the noodles are soft but still kind of bouncy like this, we'll bring it over to the sink and drain it as much as possible. It's okay, minor inconveniences ain't gonna affect the flavor. Also, the stuff in my sink is definitely less deadly as this sauce. Alright, just lost a corner. At least we have another one. It's pretty much pitch black with a hint of red. This must be what demon blood looks like. After mixing it thoroughly, we'll set it aside and move on to the mashed potatoes. That's right, you didn't hear me wrong. This recipe got pretty viral in Asia, but I saw it from a blonde dude speaking Chinese. He's pretty funny, check it out. Anyways, after peeling it, we'll cut into chunks, put it into cold water, bring it to a boil for 10 minutes. And when you can easily split it with a fork, that means it's time to drain. And then I'm gonna immediately run it through a sieve to ensure the best texture and silkiness. Try not to use a blender on potatoes, cause the blades destroy the molecular structure of the starch, making it watery. This is pretty time consuming and annoying, but I think it's totally worth it. After that, we'll add about 2 tablespoons of cream, a generous pinch of mozzarella, and a slice of American cheese. I don't have it, so I'm using Monster. Turn the heat back on low and start whipping everything together. If it gets too dry, you can always add a little bit of milk to thin it out. Look at this cheesy pulley. The amount of carbs in this is pretty much a bodybuilder's nightmare. As the final step, we'll garnish it with a seaweed packet. It's gonna make everything look so much better, trust me. So here we have it, our first recipe, cheesy potato fire noodles. The smell in my apartment right now is making my neighbor consider breaking and entering. Alright, let's get a good pull on this bad boy. I'm way too excited to eat this, so let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. This is one of those recipes that changes my life forever. I've never had a ramen experience quite like this. The soft and stretchy noodles covered in the sweet, tangy, spicy sauce is perfectly balanced out by the rich, creamy, cheesy potatoes. When you take a bite of both of them at the same time, the complex textures and the flavors just takes your mouth for a ride. I'm sorry, that was too much emotion. Overall, I think this is an easy 9.6 out of 10. Everybody should give it a try. And I think it tastes even better without my roommate next to me telling me how unhealthy this is and it's gonna make me die sooner. I'd rather have more foodgasms than miserable years on earth. But honestly, that sound like a fair trade to me. Time to move on to the next one. We'll talk about the classics. 
So this is the authentic method that I learned from K-drama. Starting with a boiling pot of water and put our noodles in. I don't believe in boiling water, but whatever. We'll have it cook for about 3 minutes, stirring occasionally, until the noodles lose their elasticity, uh, kind of like this. Now we'll drain the noodles till it has a little bit of water left. So with the heat back on low, we'll put in the sauce and continue cooking this to make sure all the flavors are soaked in. By reducing the starchy water and the sauce together, the end product almost take on a creamy texture like a coherent sauce instead of watery noodles like this just to take it to the next level we're gonna add a pinch of mozzarella and stir it in see now the sauce and the noodles have become one evenly coated throughout so we'll put it in a bowl garnish it with our seaweed packet. Here we have what I personally find to be the best and the most sustainable way to consume this product. The sauce gets a little creamy, the mozzarella toned down the spiciness, and everything gets done in one pot within 10 minutes. The taste is a solid 8 out of 10, good for a busy weeknight dinner. This recipe requires a lot of effort. I'm also the most nervous about this due to my previous disasters involving rice paper. Crispy fire noodle rice paper dumpling. I'm pretty sure a lot of you demanded that I never touch a piece of rice paper ever again. But you guys should know me pretty well. I never do what I'm told. Dip a piece of rice paper in water, put some fire noodles in the center, and it looks like she put a piece of cheese in the middle. I don't know what kind of cheese, so I'm gonna go with the monster. I do have a tiny bit of raclette left, but I'm saving it for something special. So we'll put a couple pieces in the center. Using the burrito method, we'll fold it towards the center and lock everything in. Roll it over and then tug in the sides. This is when I realized I probably should have put the cheese in first so that it's visible. Also, I'm getting a little bit nervous about the structural integrity of this. So whenever I'm in doubt, I always just double wrap it. But for the next one, I'm only gonna do a single layer with the cheese in the center. Why don't you take a closer look? So taking a wet rice paper, first lay in our cheese. Then the fire noodles with the ligma fork, of course. We'll fold it over, lock it in towards the center so the cheese is facing down. Tug in the two sides uh, like a diaper, and then finally seal it up. Look at this beautiful baby. Kinda looks like a brain. To a pan on medium heat, we'll spray some oil. Lay in our carbohydrate dumplings. I'm gonna oil the last one a little bit so it doesn't stick. I don't know how long to sear them, but as long as it gets a little crispy, I think we can flip it. I was so afraid that it's gonna stick and break, but this is going so much better than I expected. Alright, the thin side has the cheese, so we don't want it to be overcooked. Probably time to take it out. Now we top it off with the sesame seeds and nori. And let's get a ligma sound check real quick. Pretty good. Let's break it open and see the cross sec- oh, let's do it later. Later. Hmm, not really seeing any of the cheese pole. Maybe it's overcooked. Let's do another one. Here we go. That's a proper cheese slash noodle pole. In the original video, she also dipped it in like a American cheese sauce. Noodle rice paper dumpling. Mm. To emphasize again, I don't have American cheese, so I'm gonna go raw on this one. You know, I first thought the was just an exaggeration, but I totally agree with it. Surprisingly, the rice paper helped tone down the spiciness, and also it's just fun to eat noodles in a pocket form. I think dipping it in some type of dairy condiment is pretty necessary though. 8.2 out of 10. Good, but we'll never make it again. If this is not the rice and noodle combination you're looking for, we'll hook you up with the next recipe. This recipe is the easiest recipe we have today, and it's gonna involve a rice cooker. As well as premium rice from Japan. First, we'll take out a bag of fire noodles, transfer it into a Ziploc bag, and go to town with it with your fist. You can beat it on the couch if you want, but I'm just gonna do it here. I don't wash my rice. You fucked up!
So we did one cup of rice and filled the line to one and a half portions. Just so you know, I didn't pull this recipe out of my ass. I saw it on TikTok, but I can't find it anymore. I have to be honest, doesn't look that good, but we're gonna have to taste it before we judge it. Nice job, team. Looks like prison food. Let's give it a taste and rate it 113. Nasty. The noodles are really soft, kind of like gummy worms, and the rice grains are kind of hard, like Skittles. I guess it tastes slightly more flavorful and interesting than white rice, but I'm gonna have to put this in the struggle meal category. 5 out of 10. Moving on. <laughs> This one is the only one with sort of a broth today, as well as fancy topping. I just put some oil in a cold pan. We're gonna crack two eggs in it, close the lid, and just let it cook on low heat for a long time. This way, we won't get any crispy bits on the side. Everything will be nice and soft. Ideally, you want to use one cup of whole milk and one cup of water. Since I'm still waiting for my dad to come back from the grocery store, I'm just gonna use my roommate's skim milk. We'll put in our noodles, bring it to a boil, and cook for three minutes. I'm switching pots because the bottom of this Japanese pot is burning. I think I've been scammed. This pot can't cook anything properly except for boiling water. And I already have a kettle for that. Once the noodles are cooked, we'll put in our sauce. Mix it into the milk and it's ready. I think I may have reduced it a little too much. So if you're gonna try it at home, leave a little bit more milk in it. Now time to top it off with a sunny side up egg. So much for nice and soft. Should I make a video on cooking eggs? Are you guys even interested? Let me know. I'm gonna top it off with, you guessed it, mozzarella. Just melting it with a torch. At this point, you might think, there's so much cheese in every single recipe today. Well, don't make those assumptions yet, because I'm about to change your mind in about two minutes or so. Obviously, we gotta top it off with the seaweed and stuff. Looking pretty good. A little bit on the dry side, so make sure you don't reduce it as much as I did. I think this is the best looking recipe today, so I'll share on Instagram to see what you guys think. <laughs> What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. I got options. I can pass it it's like Stockton. Just Josh. I'm spending this holiday locked in. My body got rid of them toxins. Sports in the top 10. I can put the box. The noodles on top got a little crispy from all the torching. When I saw the original recipe, they didn't need to torch the cheese because the hot broth underneath just melted it. And at this point, we don't have any broth, so I improvised. This is looking really similar to recipe 2, just with an egg added. So without further ado, let's give it a taste and rate it 1 through 10. Also, this is what good ramen sound like. It's a little bit on the thick side. Again, it's supposed to be soupy. I really like the idea of boiling it with milk because it's not spicy at all anymore. You guys know that I don't do well with spicy food and I've been eating this non-stop today. So this is gonna ease the pain a little bit. The cheese and the egg adds a lot of interesting textures and flavors. You can also add whatever you want, like vegetables, mushrooms, and stuff. Fish cakes and enoki will probably taste pretty good. Overall, it's an 8.7. It's not pasta and lobster, but it's a good one to have on your roster. And brace yourself for this next recipe because when I went to Trader Joe's this morning to get the ingredients, the cashier thought I was insane. So I have here 60 slices of American cheese. This recipe is inspired by this thumbnail. I didn't even watch the video, I just knew I have to try it. Also this is why I got that pot. I wish I didn't though. I want to make the really satisfying cheese slapping edit just like Bayashi. Our first step will be peeling all of them, and I realized this is a great activity for rethinking life and recognizing that I'm wasting it. I also start to wonder if Bayashi outsourced this part to somebody else, because this is a lot of intense preparation for like 5 seconds of joy, which also describes my performance in Just to give you an idea of how long this is taking, I'll give you a time lapse of 50 times speed. Uh, so in total, we probably spent about, like, a little less than 30 minutes, averaging 20 seconds per slice over here. Alright, are you guys ready?
You know, I almost forgot what we're doing today. I ran out of the other type, so this is a new brand. I think they're gonna taste the same. By the way, I also added about half a cup of water into the cheese because it was sticking to the bottom a lot. Now I'm gonna drop ramen into cheese. That felt really sinful for some reason. But like, good type of guiltiness. I feel like I'm drowning a fish over here. You know, this type of recipe is like guaranteed to go viral on TikTok, but at the same time, like as a food creator, you gotta ask yourself, do you wanna inspire your audience and help them get better at cooking? Or do you wanna gross people out by doing something horrendous to get engagement? My answer to that question is, why not do both? <laughs> We cooked it for about 4 minutes, now the bottom is starting to stick again but perfect timing, our noodles are done. I'm not grossed out by it at all, I honestly think it looks pretty good. But again, I eat radioactive chicken, so what do I know? Honestly, it's starting to look really Italian. Or Italian American, I should say. Like the ones from New Jersey. Now it's time to add in the sauce. Suddenly I'm so grateful that I'm not lactose intolerant. This is looking like a active volcano erupting with the lava running down the hill and it's gonna turn back into rocks once it hits a river or something. What I just said also depicts what's gonna happen in my restroom later. Once I'm starting to mix everything up, the smell became very interesting. It went from straight up cheese to like a... Like a birria taco with consomme. The resemblance of smell is pretty uncanny here. We made birria for our first episode of Butt Lazier. Should I continue that series? Let me know. Finally, we'll top it off with our seaweed packet, taking a closer look to appreciate it fully. Also show you an iMessage conversation that took place between me and my roommate. I have this thing where I get older but just never wiser. Well, more for me then. Let's give it a taste and rate it 113. That just, um, occupied my mouth in a way that I never expect to experience. This is my first attempt at one of those American cheese recipe, and I think it's a little too intense for me. As Will Tennyson put it, it's like finally getting your first gig, and it's with Johnny Sins. It's a little too much, too fast. Gonna have to use this coffee here to keep it down. The ramen, you can't really taste it anymore. It's kinda like drinking mac and cheese sauce with a hint of spiciness. Try it out if you're into that. I mean, it's still good, it's cheese. Also, give me some suggestions on what to do with this. I feel bad wasting all this chemical. We went through six recipes today. My favorite one is definitely the potato one. It's just so extremely satisfying. You gotta experience it at least once in your life. It's one of those guilty pleasure things you have to enjoy enjoy alone because it's kind of shameful. Just like eating fast food in the parking lot by yourself in the car, it makes the food taste better. Couple announcements. Seems like everybody enjoyed the struggle meal video a lot, so I'll take more recipes from all of you. I want to know what you guys like to eat at night, so send me your favorite midnight snack recipe on Instagram. I'll make them, taste them, and rate them 1 through 10. It could be anything. Sweet, salty, I don't really care. Just make sure it's simple, something that we can all make at 2 a.m. in the morning. Anyways, thank you so much for 800,000 subscribers. Our community is growing so rapidly. I want to try my best to make everybody feel welcomed and recognized here. A problem I see is that a lot of your funny comments on Instagram don't get the recognition that it deserves. I think it would be a good idea for me to go on live stream immediately after I post an Instagram picture so we can react and laugh at them together. Let me know what streaming platform I should do that on. I appreciate it. Alright, thank you.